six bikes for around $500. That is the topic for today's video. This video has been requested a lot. I didn't even think it was possible, but I've somehow done it. Countless hours of research have led me to these six bikes that are around or under 500 US dollars. If you're a beginner buying their first mountain bike and you have aspirations to do stuff like this, then I would strongly suggest you save some more money and buy a hardtail off of this list right up here. But if your idea of mountain biking looks something more like this, then you've come to the right place. These bikes are a nice step up from a Walmart bike, but they are only designed for light trail riding and recreational use. These bikes are great options for dipping your toe in the world of mountain biking without spending a fortune. However, these bikes do lack a lot of desirable features that you'll find on more expensive mountain bikes. Things such as through axles, tapered head tubes, tubeless compatible wheels and tires, one by drivetrains, air suspension, dropper posts, and hydraulic disc brakes, just to name a few. I personally don't think it's worth upgrading these bikes in the future because you will probably spend more money on upgrades than if you would have just saved and bought a nicer bike to begin with. Let's go ahead and take a look at these six bikes and thank you to a commenter's suggestion. I've created a table at the end of this video comparing all six bikes side by side for easy reference. The Marin Bolinas Ridge 1. Priced at $449, this is the least expensive bike on this list. This aluminum bike does offer both 27.5 and 29 inch wheels, but it is strictly based on frame size. The extra small through medium gets 27.5 inch, and medium through extra large gets 29 inch wheels. This bike has 100 millimeters of travel from a Suntour XCE coil fork. Spoiler alert! Every bike on this list uses this fork. We've got a 3x7 Shimano Tourney drivetrain with power CX7 mechanical disc brakes. I've personally never heard of these brakes before. Components are Marin branded and the tires are just listed as MTB tires. Okay. We'll touch on geometry really quick. It has a 68.5 degree head tube angle on the 27.5 inch frames and a 68 degree head tube angle for the 29 inch versions. The seat tube angle is 74 degrees across the whole range. If budget is your main concern and you don't care about components, this is the cheapest bike on the list. There you go. The Polygon Cascade 2. Priced at $479 on bikesonline.com. This bike is pretty similar to the Marin. Same fork, 3x7 drivetrain, and Tektro mechanical disc brakes. This bike also has both wheel sizes available dependent on frame size. The head tube angle is a bit steeper at 69 degrees, and it has a slacker seat tube angle at 73 degrees. If you like the color orange and you live somewhere where there's a big polygon presence, then this may be the bike for you. Another brand with a larger European presence, we have the Cube Aim. Their website doesn't display pricing, but I did find resources saying it's around $480. Same fork as the others, Tektro mechanical disc brakes, but this bike does use a 3x8 speed drivetrain. Same deal with the wheel size as the last two bikes. 69 degree head tube angle with a 73.5 degree seat tube angle. This bike does come in two color variants and also offers internal cable routing. Otherwise, it's very similar to the other bikes. The Haro Flightline 2. This bike is slightly over budget at $510, but if you aren't able to scrounge up an additional $10, you probably shouldn't be buying a bike right now. However, this is the only bike on this list that offers both wheel sizes across all frame sizes. So if you're a short person that wants a 29 inch wheel or a very tall person that wants a 27.5 inch wheel, this is definitely the bike you want to take a look at. Same fork as the others, a 3x8 Shimano drivetrain, and Jack 7 mechanical disc brakes. That's another brake system I'm not familiar with. This bike also has two colors available and internal cable routing. 68 degree head tube angle on the 27.5 inch versions, and 68.5 degrees on the 29 inch version with a 72.5 degree seat tube angle across all of them. The Giant Talon 4. Here we are at the most expensive bike listed at 520 US dollars. Another bike with wheel size depending on frame size. Same Suntour fork, but this is the only bike to offer a 2x7 drivetrain rather than a 3x front chainring. 
I'm an advocate for less is more when it comes to drivetrain, so I'm happy to see a 2x instead of a 3x on this bike. And it has Tektro mechanical disc brakes like so many others on this list. This bike does come spec'd with Maxxis Icon tires, which is a nice touch as most of the other bikes come with unbranded tires. This is also the only bike here to offer internal routing for a dropper post in my research. You can add an externally routed dropper to any of the bikes, but it just looks a lot cleaner when the cable is ran internally. A 67.5 degree head tube angle for 27.5 inch and 68.5 degrees for the 29 inch version with a 74 degree seat tube angle for all frames. In my opinion, this bike has the best geometry for what I like when looking at geometry charts, but geometry is a very subjective topic, so what works best for me may not work best for you. That's why I don't dive too deep into geometry on these lists, because it's really up to you to go test ride some bikes and see what feels best, and then you can start to make your own preferences about geometry. Last up, we have the Trek Marlin 4. If you follow my videos, you know I'm not the biggest Trek fan when it comes to these lists, so you're probably just as shocked as I am to see a Marlin here. I am including this bike because it is similarly specced to the other bikes, and with Trek being a very large manufacturer, this along with the giant bike are probably the easiest ones you can actually get your hands on. So rejoice Trek fanboys, this is your moment. Priced at $499, the Marlin offers both wheel sizes based on frame size, same fork as all the others, 3x7 Shimano drivetrain, and Tektro mechanical disc brakes. Also offers two colors and internal cable routing. Components are all Bontrager branded, as to be expected on a Trek bike. 69.5 degree head tube angle and a 71.9 degree seat tube angle. Not gonna lie, that magenta color is pretty incredible, but otherwise there's nothing too different on this bike. All right, so those are the six bikes for around or under $500. But now I'm happy to introduce this incredible comparison chart that took me far longer to make than it really should have. And we'll run through this table and discuss it in a bit more detail, starting with price. The Marin is the cheapest here, so it wins this category. For the fork, you can see they're all highlighted because all six of these bikes have the same fork, so none of them stand out as better than the others. Rear derailleur, the Haro and the Cube are the only two bikes with an 8-speed rear derailleur, so they get the higher marks here. For the front derailleur, I gave the green box to the Giant because it is the only bike to use a 2x front derailleur rather than a 3x. It still offers plenty of range, but it's one less shifting scenario to worry about. For the brakes, the Trek, Cube, and Polygon all use the same higher grade Tektro brakes, so they take the win here. Giant was the only brand, not to mention rotor size, but all five of the other bikes use 160mm rotors front and rear. So if you like the Giant, contact your local bike shop and find out for sure what size rotors it comes with, because I don't know. For the rims, the Cube was the only bike that didn't mention if it used single or double wall rims. Every other bike here lists double wall rims. None of these bikes are tubeless compatible, but for strength, it is nice to see double wall rims on five out of the six bikes. If you are interested in the Cube, that is something you want to research before purchasing. For tires, Giant takes the win here for using Maxxis tires. The Trek and Haro would be honorable mentions with their Bontrager and Kenda tires respectively. The other three, however, are unbranded tires, which isn't the end of the world, but they may not be as durable or good as a trusted brand. Haro is obviously the best option when it comes to wheel size choices. It is the only bike here to offer either wheel size across all frame sizes. Crank set, again, I'm giving this to Giant just because it is a 2x instead of a 3x. For the cassette, the Marin does get high regards here because it does offer the largest range, but the Cube and Haro also get points for being 8-speed cassettes. The Marin, Polygon, Giant, and Trek all use 7-speed free wheels, which is a pretty outdated standard and would require a new hub if you ever decided to upgrade your drivetrain. A free wheel actually threads onto the hub, whereas a cassette has individual sprockets that slide over the hub and are secured using a lock ring. The extra features category, this is just anything that added to the value of the bikes. Giant is the clear winner here as it offers two colors, has internal cable routing, and also features internal cable routing for a dropper post in the future. So based on this chart, the Haro and Giant are clear standouts here, 
which makes a bit of sense as they are the most expensive. Let me know in the comments if you do like the comparison chart and I'll be sure to keep using that in future videos. I didn't bother doing a geometry comparison chart because again, that is a very subjective topic. All of these bikes are fairly similar in geometry, but the best way to determine your favorite would be to test ride as many of these bikes as you possibly can. I also can't tell you which bike is best for you, and this video is to be used as a research tool rather than a definitive decision. Based on my research, I think these six are the best in this price range, but you also need to do your own research on each one to find out which one is best for you and where you live and, and how you ride and things like that. If you only care to ride on casual trails every now and then, these bikes are great for that. If you do have an interest in learning to jump, do big drops, or go to Whistler and other bike parks and stuff like that, I would strongly suggest saving some more money and getting a nicer bike to begin with. I have a whole playlist of bike buyer's guides for different budgets and different bike purposes, so feel free to check out those videos and learn a little bit more about those bikes. And there you go, six bikes around $500 to get you into mountain biking on a budget. Let me know of any questions you have or comment any bikes down below that you think I missed. If you have made it this far into the video, I appreciate your time. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to click the thumbs up button and subscribe as I do upload a video every Thursday. Thank you so much for watching and until the next video, stay rowdy within reason.